today we are going to discuss production and draft calculations. We have already discussed about draft while discussing carding machine and it was also told to you that there could be two types of draft, mechanical draft and actual draft. So, we are going to repeat few things again. So, mechanical draft is the ratio of surface speeds of front and back rollers that gives us the mechanical draft. That is in a way it tells us how much is going to be the stretch on sliver. Ultimately, draw frame is a stretching machine, it is stretching the sliver. So, what is the extent of stretch? That is what is given by the draft. We can also find out draft by taking the ratio of linear movement of the back roller and front rollers in a single evolution of back roller. Therefore, the definition of draft if we write as it has been written at the bottom the it is the surface speed of front roller divided by surface speed of back roller or it is the linear movement of front roller per revolution of the back roller divided by linear movement of the back roller in one revolution. If this definition is clear to us, we will be able to find out mechanical draft very easily. So, you see in the mechanical draft calculation, the linear density or the hank of the sliver does not come into the picture. Now, first let us look at a simple drafting device consisting of four pair of rollers. Therefore, there are three drafting zones and each zone there is a draft of Z1, Z2, Z3. Though in the modern machines, there will be mostly two zones only, but it does not matter for understanding. Let us start with a simple machine where there are three zones of drafting. So, in each zone, if we want to find out the draft, then how do we go about it? So, here is a table at the bottom and if you see the table, we have mentioned in roller in column 1, the rotational speed of the rollers, column 2, diameters of the roller and column 3, the surface speed of the rollers. If you know the diameter and the rotational speed, then we can easily find out the corresponding surface speeds which are stated here. Therefore, draft between front and second roller which is Z 1 will be the ratio of surface speed. It will be pi n 1 d 1 divided by pi n 2 d 2 and therefore, it is going to be the n 1 d 1 by n 2 d 2. That is the draft in the front zone. Similarly, we can find out the draft between second and third roller it is going to be n 2 d 2 by n 3 d 3 and also we can find out the draft between third roller and the last roller that is the back roller which is going to be the n 3 d 3 by n 4 d 4. So, if we do not know the speeds also we will be able to find out draft that we will see later on, but here to find out draft we need to know the speeds of the rollers and their diameters. And when you try to find out the total draft, total draft z is the multiplication of individual drafts z 1, z 2, z 3 and if we put the values of z 1, z 2, z 3, then you will see that n 2 d 2 getting cancelled, n 3 d 3 getting cancelled. So, therefore, we are left with n 1 d 1 by n 4 d 4. So, total draft is basically n 1 d 1 by n 4 d 4. Now, here there is a diagram on the left hand side of a drafting system and we see there are three pair of rollers front, middle and back that means there are two drafting zones and they drive from the motor to the different parts of this machine, this the back 
middle and front rollers are shown. Now, if I want to find out the draft in this case, we can find it out even without knowing the speed of the individual rollers. So, what will you do? We will try to find out the revolution of the front roller for one revolution of the back roller. So, we will assume that the back roller as if it is connected through the set of gears and the motion is going to the front roller. So, we can identify the gears train and which are the gears which are involved for motion transfer from back to front roller. We can look at them and now if we imagine that the back roller turns by one revolution, what would be the number of revolution of the front roller? So, this calculation is shown here 1 into 66 by 109, 109 by 42, 131 by 84 and finally, 84 by 33. This number indicates the number of teeth in the gears which are involved in motion transfer between back to front, though in the actual case the motion goes from front roller to the towards the back roller side, but it does not matter for the calculation of draft. We can assume as if the back roller is turning the front roller or vice versa also we can do. We can also find out for one revolution of the front roller, what is the number of revolution of the back roller. Both way one can calculate the draft. So, in this case what the diagram from the diagram what we get that for one revolution of the back roller, the revolutions of the front roller is 6.238. That means, when the back roller turns by one revolution, the front roller will be turning by 6.2 revolutions. So, the draft will be how much? It will be, we can find it out that what is the linear movement of the back roller and what is the linear movement of the front roller for one revolution of the back roller. So, linear movement of the back roller for one revolution will be 1 into pi d b r, which is at the bottom and the linear displacement of the front roller surface for one revolution of the back roller is going to be n into pi d f r, where d f r indicates the diameter of the front roller. Similarly, d b r indicates the diameter of the bottom roller. So, we multiply 6.238 into 35 and also the value of pi will be there and if we do so, we will get a figure which is 7.79. That is the draft between these two rollers. Also, we can see you can cancel pi from both numerator and denominator. In that case, we will left out with n d f r by d b r. So, it is going to be 6.238 into 35 by 28 and we get a result which is 7.79 or almost 7.8. That is the total draft between back and front roller. The other draft in which we will be interested is the brake draft, that is the draft in the back zone. It is also known as preliminary draft. So, in that case, what we should do? This is going to be the ratio of displacement of the back and the middle roller surfaces, respectively, per revolution of the back roller. In exactly following the same procedure, we will see if the back roller rotates by one turn, what is going to be the rotation of the middle roller first and then we revolution will be then transformed into linear movement. So, the diagram is shown here the gear diagram, we have to follow that which are the gears which are involved in this case 
between back and middle roller and if we do so we get this value 1 into 20 by 148 into 143 by 18 and therefore, we get a figure 1.07 that is the number of revolution of the middle roller if the back roller turns by 1 revolution. Then we take the linear movement and for that we have to multiply it by pi also and hence the break draft is going to be n pi dmr by pi d by r. Similarly, pi and pi cancels in this case. So, we will be left out with this figure 1.07 into 28 by 28, where 28 millimeters it is the diameter of the back roller and the middle roller. Therefore, break draft in this case is going to be 1.07. This is how we can calculate the break draft and the total draft. So, the front zone draft is how much? If we multiply break draft and front zone draft, we get the total draft. So, if we know the total draft, if we know the break draft, then if I divide total draft by break draft, then we can see the value of front zone draft or main zone draft. That way, we can find out how much draft is there between middle and front roller. So, this draft calculation is all based by based on the gears and their number of teeth. In the calculation, the hank of the sliver or the linear density of the sliver is not coming to the picture. But ultimately, it is the sliver which is going to be stretched. So, what matters to us finally is the ratio of change in hank or ratio of change in linear density of the input and the output that is going to be the actual draft. So, in the actual job how do I calculate the actual draft? In method 1 from the length of input and output sliver what we have to do is just from a can remove 6 sliver pieces of 1 meter length first. Feed this 1 meter sliver pieces together at the back and run the machine collect the delivered sliver and measures its length. Find out the length ratio delivered is to feed length ratio will be the draft because the sliver is going to be stretched. So, 1 meter sliver will be stretched by 6 meter if the draft is 6, if the draft is 8 1 meter will be transformed into 8 meter. So, if we if the input feed length is fixed we check the output feed length, take the ratio that will give us the draft. So, this way we can easily calculate the actual draft or method 2 is by taking the ratio of linear density or hank. Because in an industrial situation measurement of speed, diameters of the rollers or teeth of the gears may not be always feasible. In such situations one can find out the linear density of the input and output sliver and calculate the draft that is what is normally done in industrial practice. So, if we follow this particular method, then draft is number of doubling of slivers into input sliver linear density in terms of kilotex divided by output sliver linear density in kilotex. If we do this, we can find out what is the actual draft. If the linear density is expressed in terms of hank that is in English system any, then the draft is going to be count of output sliver in any divided by count of input sliver into 1 upon doubling. That is how we should do the calculations. So, depending upon the units, we either follow the first ratio or otherwise we will follow the ratio second ratio and we can find out the actual draft. There is another concept this was also told to you while discussing carding that is draft constant. 
Drafting rollers are driven by a chain of gears. Number of teeth of any gear in the chain can be altered to change the speed ratio between them. If there are n number of gears which are driving two rollers, we can change any of those gears and thereby alter the speed. It is very obvious. But in the case of draw frame, the machine designers has given the flexibility to change the teeth of two gears, one for total draft change and the other for the brake draft change, for altering the total and the brake drafts. So, the way the drive has been designed that if there are n number of gears, there are two gears which have been specified. This, is, this has been done by the machine manufacturer and these two gears are changeable. That is their teeth, number of teeth on them can be changed in order to change the brake draft or the main draft. In the calculation of draft therefore, if the teeth of the changeable gear is considered as a variable, then the numerical value of the ratio of the number of teeth of the gear change we get in estimating the draft is the draft constant. We already have seen that the draft is 1 into so many uh, uh, the teeth of the gears are coming on the numerator and denominator. In that series of numbers which are there, you take out the number which is representing the teeth of the draft change pinion and rest of the things is not going to change when you want to change the draft. Therefore, if we keep that particular teeth of that particular gear or pinion which is going to change the draft, then whatever value I get that becomes my draft constant. It can also be stated as the estimated draft when the teeth in the draft change pinion is considered one only. Both way we can define it. We have given a calculation for draft constant for this specific case. So, if we see the we have lifted the previous equation while calculating the draft and put it here and we are writing draft constant is equal to 1 into T D C P that is teeth of depth chain pinion and then the series of gears which are there the ratio of their teeth it is shown here. So, now draft is going to be how much T D C P by 42 into 1 by 31 because 109, 109 will cancel, 84, 84 will cancel. So, some of these figures, uh, num these, these things will change and will be left out with this and we can write draft is going to be 0 0.118 into teeth of the draft chain pinion, which is a variable in this case. But the rest of the gears remain same, their teeth number is not going to change. So, we find out what is the value and that figure is coming to be 0.118 in this case. Therefore, the ratio 0.118 is known as draft constant in our case. So, for this particular drive, the draft constant is going to be 0.118. So, therefore, the formula for the draft is going to be 0.118 into teeth of the draft chain pinion. So, you can write that draft is going to be the draft constant k with that figure is not going to change into number of teeth of the draft chain pinion which is n. Therefore, z is going to be k into n from the draft constant one can easily determine the draft by multiplying draft constant by number of teeth of the chosen DCP. So, if I draft constant is known to me for each and every machine the draft constant will be fixed and we can easily find out the draft when you choose a particular change pinion. We just know the number of teeth which are there. So, we multiplied number of teeth with the draft constant, we get the draft. As an example, if we want to choose as a DCP of 57, the draft is going to be 0 0.118 into 57, 
that is 6.72. So, this constant figure is normally noted and for each and every machine and then one can easily find out the draft for a given uh, change pinion. Sometimes we will be interested to know the number of teeth of the DCP for a fixing a certain draft. So, sometimes we need to know the value of n for a given value of z. In that case, we can write n is going to be z by k and therefore, 1 upon k is going to be 8.47 that is 1 upon k is 1 divided by 0.118. If we do so, we will get a figure 8.47. So, 8.47 is nothing but 1 by 0 0.118. This is what is 8.47. So, that multiplied by the draft will give me the number of teeth that I required for, for a given draft. As an example, if I want a draft of 6.2, the DCP should have teeth how much or how many? 8.47 is 6.2, which gives me a figure 52.5. So, this is we can take a value either 52 or 53. If I choose a gear which is close to 52, it will work. If 52 gear teeth is not available, if 53 is available, you can also use 53, because that will make very little error in the draft, because we cannot have teeth which is a decimal figure. It has to be always integer 52, 53, 54 or 50. This kind of teeth will be always there in the change pinion. And on the right hand side, there is a plot between the teeth in DCP that is n versus draft. We get a, a linear line because z is going to be k n. So, the equation is a linear equation where k indicates the slope. So, draft constant geometrically is indicating the slope of the line which we get when you plot draft against change pinion teeth. The slope indicates the draft constant. From draft we move to production calculations. Production calculation basics are also very simple. Production means we need to know how much length of saliva is delivered per unit time. This unit time one can decide it could be if it is per hour one can decide one can decide per shift per day it is up to us to decide what is going to be the unit in this case let's say per 8 hour if we decide the length of saliva delivered in meter per 8 hours multiplied by linear density of the saliva in gram per meter gram per meter is nothing but the kilotex value of the saliva. So, gram per meter if we write it is nothing but whatever is the kilotex value of the saliva that is going to be the gram per meter of the saliva. So, if I know how much meter I have delivered and if I know and then I know what is the weight per meter in gram I multiply these two I will get the figure so much gram I have produced and then that can be converted into kg also. So, production in kg per hour per head per 8 hour production in kg per head per 8 hour at 100 percent efficiency. So, it will be front roller speed multiplied by pi into roller diameter millimeter divided by 1000 we have to convert into meter then multiplied by 60 into 8, 8 hours multiplied by 60 gives me the minute, total minute and then saliva linear density kilotex by 1000. This is going to give me the production in kg per head per 8 hour. 
So, front roller speed into power into roller diameter by 1000 actually gives me front roller delivery in meters per minute. So, if I know the delivery rate in meters per minute, say this is delivery, that multiplied by 480 will give you the total minutes which are there multiplied by slave linear density kilo test by 1000 will give me the figure in kg. So, that happens to be 0 0.48 into front load delivery into slave linear density. So, that becomes the formula to find out the production per head per 8 hour at 100 percent efficiency. If the slave count is expressed in the English system, then this linear density kilotex which are there it has to be changed. Suppose the density is given in any, so it will be 590.5 divided by any that gives me in tex and that has to be converted into kilotex. So, you have divided by another 1000 and that gives me a figure finally, which is 0 0.2834 into front load delivery meters per minute by slival linear density in any. So, this way also we can find out what is going to be the production per head per 8 hour. Here as an example, we have taken the same diagram and went to find out what is the delivery rate. For this particular problem or diagram, delivery rate is going to be motor speed that is speed of the motor pulley and then motor pulley diameter by machine pulley diameters and then we have to go through the gearings to find out what is going to be the delivery rate of the front roller. So, if we do so, we get these figures that is 1440 is the speed of the motor, then 270 and 165, these are the diameter of the motor pulley and the machine pulley and then the rest is the teeth of the gear train which is driving the front roller. So, finally, we go to the front roller through all these gear trains and the figure that we get is 258.9 meters per minute. This calculation you can do yourself also because here all these are cancelling and will be left out like this. So, the delivery rate is going to be around in this case 259 meters per minute. In today's you know, uh, standard it is very low speed. So, if I produce a slide of let us say 5 kilotex, then how much is going to be the production per hour per head? It is going to be 258.9 that is the delivery rate into 5 kilotex fiber and in 1 hour 5 into 60 and gram we convert it into kg. So, I divide it by 1000 we get a figure 77.67 kg. So, that is going to be the production rate of the draw frame per head per hour. So, it is per hour per head. If there are most of the machines are two head machines in that case from both the heads we will get double the production. So, we have to multiply 17.67 multiplied by 2 that gives me 155.5, 155.34 that becomes the production per hour from a two head machines. And if I want per shift with 100 percent efficiency, I have to multiply it by a figure which is 7.5 because we have assumed in this case that in a shift of 8 hours 30 minutes is the recess time. And though most of the time in the industry the machine runs continuously, but anyway if I assume that in a shift 7.5 hours the machines are running, then I get a figure that I multiplied 155.34 into 7.5 and I get a figure 1165 kilo. That means a draw frame in this particular case is producing 1165 kg of material per shift. 
the delivery rate is on the lower side, the modern draw frames will run at 500, 600 meters per minute. It all depends upon the type of fibers that you are processing. Now, during a shift, the machine may remain idle for short or long time due to many, many reasons. So, we have already stated that you are finding out the production at 100 percent efficiency. But the machines may not run at 100 percent efficiency due to many reasons like one is can changing time. Once the cans get filled up, the can is replaced, full can is replaced by an empty can. So, there is some time which is lost, production time is lost, could be lost. In the modern machine, they are trying to overcome this. Minor cleaning, sometimes we stop the machine for some cleaning operations, sliver breaks on the creel, so machine stops and it becomes idle for some time. There is a possibility of roller lapping, again the machine will stop because you have to protect the machine. The whenever there is a lapping, there is a stop motion which will stop the machine, there is a sensor which will sense and the machine will be stopped. And till the lapping is removed, the machine remains idle. So, some production time is lost. That could be trumpet choking also, that can also lead to idle time for the machine. Shortage of feed can in some cases that we have to feed 8 cans behind the machine. If there is shortage of 1 can, then we will not be able to run the machine. So, this problem also could be there and the last problem could be power failure, which is also possible. So, there are many, many reasons which can lead to idle time for the machine and therefore, the efficiency or the production that we expect theoretically, we may not get that production actually. Therefore, efficiency is defined as actual production divided by theoretical production into 100. So, theoretical production is based on the gears, numbers and uh, the calculation that we have already seen. Actual production may come less than that take this ratio multiplied by 100 that gives me the efficiency figure. Efficiency of a draw frame lies between 75 to 85 percent and depending upon the mixing of the fibers. That is how the machine runs and actual production therefore, could be theoretical production into whatever is efficiency percentage divided by 100 that will give me. So, actual production in this case 0.48 into front roller delivery, saliva linear density which we have found out earlier that into the efficiency figure we have to now put into the equation and then only we will get what is the actual production. The other thing that we are going to discuss is the can filling time. How much time it takes to fill up a can? It all depends upon the can capacity and the production rate per head. So, filling time is going to be the ratio of can capacity divided by production rate per head in kg per hour and that multiplied by 60 minutes to convert the time into minute. As an example, in the capacity of a can, draw frame can is 22 kilo, machine is producing at the rate of 80 kg per hour then the filling time is going to be 16.5 minutes. That is every 16.5 minutes a can is going to be filled by the sliver. So, every 15, 16 minutes the can will be full with sliver and we have to replace the full can by a empty can. So, we can expect that in an hour that could be 4 replacement roughly in one head, in two head that is going to be 8 replacement and there is a time is lost during this replacement of can as a loss of production. The other thing which will be interested to know the how much length of sliver is there in a can, how to find it out. It is also very simple straightforward calculation. Suppose the empty can weight is W kg, 
full can weight is x kg. So, the weight of sliver is going to be w minus x kilo. If the sliver linear density is s in terms of kilotex, then the length of sliver is going to be w minus x by s into 1000 meter. As an example, let us say the weight of sliver is 22 kilo, the sliver linear density is 5.5 kilotex, then how much sliver is there in the can? 22 by 5.5 into 1000. So, that will give me, so this 5.5 is coming is as gram per meter. So, we have to convert this into kg. So, therefore, 5.5 by 1000 is coming, this 1000 is going up in the numerator. So, we get 22 into 1000 divided by 5.5 and that is in meter that multiplied by 1000. So, that gives me 4000 meter of material. So, how much it is uh, giving? That in a can we have almost 4000 meter of sliver on an average this is going to be there. So, we convert this all we can say we can convert the weight of the material which is in kg into gram first. So, 22 by 1000 gives the weight in gram, this is gram per meter and that multiplied gives so many meters and that convert it into a value which is 4000 meter. So, we will get roughly 4000 meter of sliver in a can. With this we close this calculation part of production and dropped. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.